I'm still cleaning out my storage boxes and I found another antique device I thought you might be interested in. Uh, this one is a an old Radio Shack transistor checker and it will do PNP and NPN uh, bipolar transistors. Um, it uh, has two sockets and then alligator clips to test your transistors with. Um, yeah, it's rather crude, but let me uh, let me uh, propose a little twist to this that the circuit inside here is awfully similar to a jewel thief and uh, I'll I'll go over the circuits of both and you can uh, kind of see how they are uh, similar. Okay, I've got the alligator clips on here and you notice these big alligator clips on these small connection points it makes it rather uh, precarious. But uh, you have to know the base connect, uh, collector and emitter of these bipolar transistors to use them. Uh, it can be emitter base collector like this one or it can be emitter collector base like this one. And yeah, you can't use this socket if, uh, if it's not uh, the same configuration. Okay, so I've used the alligator clips. Uh, we'll find out if it's NPN. It is not NPN. PNP, you can see the neon bulb come on. Uh, so we know it's configured correctly and now we can test for the uh, amplification and it's, this is just a, uh, a relative scale so it's got an amplification of 20 on the indicator doesn't really tell you much other than just relative to other transistors but that's it um, it doesn't really tell you a lot and you have to know a lot about the transistor to begin with so let's compare these two circuits this is a standard jewel thief and this is the Radio Shack transistor tester. Now right away you're going to say, wait, 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 this side over here is much more complex than this side over here. But I think if we look at section by section in these uh, different circuits, I think you'll see that they're pretty much the same circuit. Okay, bear with me here. Okay, so first of all, this uses an NPN transistor. And as such, it only needs the battery located one direction. Okay, but this circuit is designed to have either NPN or PNP transistors. And that means you have to be able to switch the polarity of the battery. And if we look down here, that's exactly what they did. NPN and PNP, and it's just a switch to change the polarity of the battery. So we could add that circuitry in here, and then we could use both uh, NPN and PNP transistors interchangeably. Okay, so let's look at another part of the circuit. Let's look at all these resistors along here. This is a variable resistor. This resistor can be switched out, but all of these could be substituted by this fixed resistor, or we could add a variable resistor in here and get about 80% of the function that's going on in here. Okay, let's move on up here. This lower part of the transformer is a center tapped coil, and there's a center tap right there. This over here is a center tapped coil. Yes, okay, so now we only have a couple more sections of this circuit to investigate. We have this piece up here, the secondary coil. Why do they need a secondary coil? Okay, well they need a step up because they're using a neon bulb. This circuit does not require that. It has a, an LED which will run just fine off of the battery in this circuit, so it doesn't need to be stepped up. Uh, so in fact, we could connect an LED from say here to here, actually two LEDs back to back, and we could have pretty much the same circuit as we have over here. All this circuit up here does is allow the neon bulb to operate. And the last part of the circuit is the socket for the, for the transistor. And this, as we said earlier, could be switched out for NPN and PNP if we did these other things like uh, being able to reverse the polarity on the battery and then having a back-to-back -back LED. So as you can see, these two circuits are awfully similar, if not, in fact, pretty much analogs of each other. This is another device that has pretty much been replaced by this thing. Um, there's just uh, no point in having a single device anymore. Uh, this just takes up too much room. You'd have to have, you know, you have to have something to check transistors, capacitors, inductors, and all that old style. 
when nowadays just this single device for six dollars can do everything that uh, five or six boxes this size can do. Well that's it for this video on the Radio Shack Dynamic Transistor Checker and how it might be the grandfather of today's jewel thief. Well I hope you found that useful and interesting in your study of electronics history.